19 at 7.30 p.m. in the municipal complex, pursuant to Section 13 of the Open Public Meetings Act. Adequate notice of the time and place of this regular meeting has been provided by prominently displaying the schedule of regular meetings on the official notice board in the municipal complex and by transmitting a copy of this schedule to the Princeton Packet, Town Topics, Trenton Times, the Trentonian, and to Comcast Cable of New Jersey, Inc. A copy was also filed with the clerk of Princeton. So. Do we have a quorum? We do. Okay. All right. Well, we have a few things to go through before we uh, get to the applications to the evening. Um, I guess roll call. Mr. Cohen? Yes, here. <laughs> yes. Ms. Colson? Here. Mr. Davidge? Mr. Floyd? Here. Mr. Shriver? Here. Mr. Tenenbaum? Mr. Valvanis? Here. Ms. Chen? Here. Ms. Perron Lambros? Here. Mr. Stein? Here. Thank you. Okay. Karen, do we, these two administrative matters, do we want to do these separately or just affirm these as one or one? What, what's the, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I what's the matter? Separately. Separately? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have two just administrative item, items that are included in your packet. The first is fixing charges for the meeting notices. Um, anybody have any comments on, on that? Somebody want to make a motion that we uh, approve it? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Yes. Ms. Colson? Yes. Mr. Dapp? I'm sorry. Mr. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Shriver? Yes. Mr. Vavanis? Yes. Ms. Chen? Yes. Ms. Baron Lambros? Yes. Thank you. The second one is, a, is entitled um, Providing Adequate Notice of the Meetings of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Is there any discussion on this? Somebody like to move on this? So moved. Okay. Second? Second. second. Oh, okay. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Colson? Yes. Mr. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Shriver? Yes. Mr. Velvanis? Yes. Ms. Chen? Yes. Ms. Perron Lambros? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is approval of the April 24th, 2019 meeting minutes. Again, in your packet. Any comments? Somebody like to move on this? I'll move so. to approve. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm sorry. I move to approve. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Colson? Yes. Mr. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Shriver? Yes. Ms. Perron Lambros? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Resolutions. We have one. This is uh, identified as case number Z1919-769, 23 Lee Avenue, block 6505, lot 28. Paragraph A on the first page, the third line, it should say August 22, 2018, not 2019. And that's simply the date that you had adopted the uh, resolution given the applicant her original approval. So that's just a, an error. It should be 18. Okay. Any other comments? Someone would like to make a motion? Mm -hmm. Motion so to approve the meeting in the minutes. Uh, or straight that. Um, to approve the uh, resolution. Okay. Second. No. Second. Okay. 
Who moved? I'm sorry. I moved. The resolution? Yeah, the resolution to, you know. To approve the minutes. No, I'm, I'm moved, I, I corrected myself. I, I misspoke. Okay. I right. moved to approve the resolution <laughs> denying right. the variances in twenty. Okay. But since you weren't there, you're right. You can't do that. Wasn't I there? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so let's let's see. Would someone else uh, uh, be willing to <laughs> move approval of I the resolution? The people. I should explain. Those who can vote tonight and move approval are Ms. Chen, Ms. Colson, or Mr. Floyd. Okay. I'll move to approve the resolution. All right. <laughs> I'll second. Okay. Okay. Ms. Colson? Yes. Mr. Floyd? Yes. Ms. Chen? Yes. Thank you. Okay. On to the applications. By the way, if anybody's here for 437 Ewing Street, which is application number Z1919 749. The applicant has requested that that application be carried to our first meeting of the new year on the 22nd of January. So and I'll, 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 no, I, uh, I'll note that the board has jurisdiction, so you're taking jurisdiction tonight and carrying it. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, the first, uh, our first and only application of the evening, case Z1919-744. Uh, 21 Battle Road, Block 38.01, Lot 10 in the R1 zone. And the applicant did re revise their application. They provided new notice, which is in order, and the board has jurisdiction to hear the revised application this evening. Please. Derek, do you want to you want to I'll do a quick recap of their uh, revised application. Um, Albert and Jenny Internosia, the applicants of owners of 21 Battle Road have revised their uh, architectural and site plans. The new plans propose following revisions. The footprint of the house has been shifted 15 feet to the east, which results in the elimination of the uh, setback to height uh, variance. The detached garage residents and portico share have all been eliminated. Uh, and a third garage bay has been added to the existing two-car garage, which is attached to the rear facade of the house. The elimination of the, the carriage house uh, with the garage and the port coast share, um, well, the elimination of the, uh, the secondary residence eliminates the variance for lot area, which required a 25% greater lot area than required. And the elimination of the secondary residence Garage Porco share also reduces the FAR to 23.9%, which is below the maximum percentage permitted of 25%. Thus, the FAR variance has been reduced. The third bay uh, garage that's been added to the, um, to the structure is behind the house and it complies with the applicable FAR. The applicants also eliminated the U-shaped driveway, um, which eliminates the variance that requires 50 feet between the, um, the two openings of the U-shaped driveway. This in conjunction with the elimination of the port coast share of the secondary residence and the associated pavement also results uh, in the elimination of the impervious uh, coverage variant. So they have a complying plan with re regard to the impervious coverage. And finally, they have um, revised the front facade of the house with a four foot by 17 foot bump out that eliminates the variance, which limited the maximum length of the front facade wall to 45 feet. So currently, with all these uh, revisions, they've eliminated all the variances except for the required lot width, um, which is 125 feet, and the existing uh, and proposed lot width is 100 feet. Um, they're requesting consideration under the C1, and be glad to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Um, my name is Ryan Kennedy, uh, attorney in Stevens Lee for the applicant here tonight. Uh, if we could just have, I have our, to my left, your right, we have our architects. If I could have um, Mr. sworn in. And gentlemen, could you state your names for the record first? Peter Dorn. And? My address is uh, 105 Maple Avenue in Morristown, New Jersey. Oh, sorry. Dan, you want to 
I don't think we're expecting any. Yeah. Okay. And Mr. Dorn, do you swear or affirm your testimony this evening will be truthful? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so as Derek said, um, this is an application you've seen twice before. We've revised it several times. Um, you've heard extensive testimony and, and comment on it, uh, the original iterations, and uh, we're here to say that I think we, we heard the comments, we heard what the, bo what the board thought and, and what the neighbors thought, and have eliminated all the requests for variances other than the pre-existing lot with variance. Um, this is a street where, but for um, save, save two houses, uh, none of the homes comply with the 125 foot width requirement, um, including this one. Uh, there is no opportunity, as uh, uh, you heard in our planner's testimony uh, for the prior two meetings, uh, that there's no ability to obtain further uh, width from either neighbor without making them more non-conforming. Um, so we are here on a classic C1 hardship variance for lot width only and are otherwise uh, presenting a compliant uh, a project that complies with, with zoning. Um, I'll also say the, um, this is a, a street with uh, significant street trees. Um, we're not intending to touch those or, or deal with them in, in any way. Uh, we intend to comply with the, um, the desires of the town arborists and the ordinance completely as far as trees go. Uh, I believe there will be, our plan shows nine removals and 13 additions based on the CalPER calculations, but it's our intention to comply with the, all requirements uh, as far as tree removal and replacement go. Um, I'll just ask here, again, is all the variances we were looking for before, I'll just ask if our architect can confirm that we're now conforming as to lottery. We removed that second unit request, is that correct? Yes. Um, the removal of the U-shaped driveway as well as the coverage is now compliant? Yes. Um, floor area, we're below the 25% floor area requirement? Yeah. Yes. Um, by shifting the house, we no longer have the even existing uh, non-conforming condition for height to setback ratio, is yes. that correct? Yes. Um, we've dealt with the facade articulation uh, 45 foot requirement? Yes. And again, by removing U-shaped driveway, there's no longer needing a variance for the width between the, the segments of the U-shape. Correct. correct. Yep. Yes. So um, again, here's the, the bulk table here. Um, I'm going to point out the uh, existing condition um, of the 100-foot lot width and the requirement in the R1 zone uh, for 125 feet. Uh, this next slide shows the, the revised plan. Uh, Peter, other than the, the removal of the um, detached garage and the U-shaped driveway and, and the downsizing, any other significant features you want to point out to the, the board? No. no. Okay. Um, next slide is an aerial view of the properties. Um, Peter, this next slide is the tax map. It's color-coded. Uh, is the blue property the uh, 21 battle? Yes. All right. Um, the red properties, are those all other properties that are also undersized 100 foot width properties? Yes. All right. So again, just, just to remind the board of the testimony that we heard in the prior meetings, uh, it's a pre-existing non-conforming condition uh, where the street predominantly, if not almost entirely, is 100 foot lots and that the uh, lots to the left and right are similarly undersized and unavailable for the potential to uh, expand or, or purchase property. Um, that is, that's really all we have here tonight. Um, we're, we're pleased to <laughs> keep it short and remove all of the requests that we had uh, for bulk variances uh, before, but we're certainly um, happy to answer any questions you have for our architect. Mr. Kennedy, you want this to be an exhibit, this uh, part? Yes, my, my pleasure. Thank you, Karen. I'd like okay. to mark this as our one single exhibit. It's uh, seven slides. Okay. Does anybody on the board have any questions? Yes. I'm, I'm curious about the elevations. Is this a new elevation? I mean, this is what your yes. new plan is. Yes. It's a lot like the old plan. I mean, yes. like the existing. It, so it is, other than, other than the porch that we, we uh, it, it was shrunk and pulled out so that we could get the articulation. Okay. 
so we could eliminate the uh, variance for the 45 foot, uh, you know, single right. elevation. But for the most part, you, the, the house, house is, is going to look like that's correct. The existing it's gonna, house. It, it's going to look almost exactly like the one we designed originally. But you're still flattening the existing house, demolishing the existing house. Yes. No. It's the only way we can do it. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay. Um, is there <laughs> is there anyone in the audience audience would like to speak on this application? Just identify yourself, name and address, and be sworn. Sure. Mr. McKeon, do you swear or affirm any testimony you give this evening will be truthful? Thank you. No problem. Um, any better? Yes. All right. Uh, again, my name is Rob McKeon. I live at 33 Springdale Road, which is just around the corner from 21 Battle, and uh, we received the legal notice, which I appreciate it. Um, I am here. Uh, many of the other folks in the neighborhood just had conflicts tonight, and obviously the proposal is very different. Um, anyway, I, I don't have a position on the variance. I think it. Um, I understand where you're coming from. I, I appreciate where it's landed now. I think it's in a much better spot in, entirely. To, uh, so I appreciate everyone's vigilance. Uh, it's great to hear about the London plan. The, the trees that line the road are really important to all the neighbors, and it's great to hear that that's the plan. Um, my backyard is kind of direct line with the backyard 21 battle. So, and I know other neighbors care too about. Um, the privacy trees, so it's good to hear the plan to uh, replace the ones scheduled to be taken down. Um, I know that's not directly on the agenda tonight, but that's something we all care a lot about. So anyway, I just appreciate the continued vigilance, and uh, thank you. Please. Hi, I'm Rekha Herzer. I live at 68 Battle Road. Ma'am, do you um, swear or affirm any testimony you give this evening will be truthful? Yes. Thank you. Um, I just want to say I'm disappointed that they're tearing down this beautiful house. It has more character than almost any other house on the block, uh, and I'm really going to miss it. That said, um, I'm glad that they pulled everything back so that the new house conforms with most of the zoning variants, you know, uh, zip codes. Um, the only thing I wasn't quite clear on, because I read through everything, was the setback um, from, you know, the other houses kind of set back from the road. They're not like right up against the street. They're kind of set back in a nice way, and they're all sort of in the same line. Will the new house uh, be in line like that? Will that be set back the same way? You can, yeah, it's, it's set back or pretty much where, where it was, where it is right now. Okay. So it, it's in line with the rest of the houses. Okay. That hasn't changed. Okay, good, thank you. Hi, my name's Howard Tomlinson. I'm at 94 Battle Road. Mr. Tomlinson, do you swear or affirm any testimony you give this evening will be truthful? Yeah, I do. Thank you. I just wanted to also, having been to the last meeting, um, I'm impressed by the, the process that went on here and the listening, and really do appreciate the work that went on to to resolve those issues, and all I can say is welcome. Doesn't feel like it now, but welcome. <laughs> I know. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay, we'll close the public portion. Uh, comments from the board? Okay, would somebody like to make a motion? I'm sorry. Move that we approve based on C1 small lot. Mr. Stein, I appreciate the motion, but I don't think you can vote tonight because we have Ms. Chen and Ms. Lampros here. Oh, sorry. So, one, two, three, four, five. Correct. No, no, because you're the third alternate. So. Okay. Sorry. What do you? 
I move we approve the application. Second. I'll second it. Okay. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Colson? Yes. Mr. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Shriver? Yes. Mr. Balvanis? Yes. Ms. Perel Lombros? Yes. Ms. Chen? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. Chen was not at the last meeting. Thank you very much for going through and doing what you did. We really appreciate it. Mr. Stein. <laughs> yeah. Could have been your motion after all. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, we are almost done. Um, we have two issues that I just wanted to bring up. One is, one is the... Uh, end of the year report to the mayor and council, and the other is the 2020 Zoning Board of Adjustment goals. Anybody have any thoughts on either of these? On the, on the goals? Okay. When do we, uh, when do you think it's appropriate to do anything? Um, I mean, we usually get the report done in the first or second month of the new year, so. Okay, so something we can... I mean, the report actually has, the intent is to identify issues that we see recurring that maybe the town wants to look at. Um, in terms of goals, I mean, we're a judicial board, so, I mean, other than praying that the harmonization of the ordinances takes effect this year, um, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's other areas you want to think about and give some thought to for other goals, but okay. we kind of process what the council's goals are and we act upon those rules to, to make our decisions. So, it's Can we um, weigh in on, for example, the issue that came up last month? Is that the kind of thing that we could make Mediation? recommendation about in terms of... I'm going to defer what? to... What, you know, what the housing for, you know, the, one of the issues that came out about having, whether or not to have owner occupied as a condition, you know, leads to, you know, can a single family home become a duplex and, you know, do we, in other words, I, I don't know whether, what the, the tradition and even what our kind of jurisdiction is in terms of recommendations that we might make well, is that being too activist for us to well ordinarily i might say no except that we anticipate litigation with the case that you heard last month 23 li sorry we anticipate litigation so that's why if this were a different circumstance i'd say it's appropriate for the board to raise concerns or make comments in general, but since that's going into litigation, I think it'd be best to hold back any comments or thoughts you had about the case. Um, and as far as what's appropriate, I'm sorry, Derek, did you mention that you might provide the board with last year's report so they could take a look at that and see if it triggers uh, some thoughts? Or sure, I can give both the last last year's and this is just a, a spreadsheet so we actually compile this into a narrative report and then you, this gets dressed up and um, I mean I guess your question if we weren't in litig if this month's case, last month's case was not going to lead to litigation it would be similar to the Airbnb situation several years ago where we said hey you know this seems a little odd that people have Airbnbs all over town there's really no mechanism to police them and this person came in and they wanted to get an actual variance to permit it you know, a detached dwelling to be in there, you know, a bed and breakfast. Uh, I mean, that was somewhere where you, the board did put in its opinion. And uh, I mean, you could do that, but I think, like Karen says, the litigation is probably 
Well, yeah. I, I say that only because if your comment was more than simply you think it's an important issue for the planning board and the governing board to review, um, I, I think that's very much what the resolution indicates, that you, don't, you, you believe it's important, but it's beyond your purview and that it should be something that the governing body or the planning board looks at. If you also don't want to be offering now an opinions about it should be this, it should be that, that's where I think I'd be a little concerned because we, I'm, I fully anticipate um, uh, that it's going to be in litigation shortly. So that's, 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 that's really the reason um, for my comments saying, well, let's have some caution and limit uh, what your comments are it, going to it, be. I s totally see your point. It does, however, seem to me like the things, like these sorts of things are the very things that need to be made known to council, you know, and I, I know we can always just talk to people, but. Um, well, so I, I think I think it, it would need to be done carefully for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. If the board as a whole wanted to recommend that the governing body examine that issue, uh, I don't have a problem with that. Um, it's only if you decided to go now and start saying, and I, and I think some things should be duplexes and some should be um, uh, three family and you should put them here and you should put them there. Uh, then I would be a little concerned about the impact on the litigation. So 